Crash man's here. Good mornings. So, whip sign. What is that one? If you're a union person, you have an idea what that word whip sign means. It's worth going to look up. It's a just interesting concept, right? Another one of them words, but whip sign. So, for decades, I was part of, related to, always tied to, uh, major automakers, conveyor and controls group inside automations divisions. Inside that company, I worked for a number of different badges that the company has. <clears throat> and over time, they consolidated that stuff. But there used to be empires out there in the auto world where every plant, just due to the volume of production, the value of production and the money that that plant passes through a local economy is huge. So anyway, whip sign, what's that got to do with whip sign? So, beautiful plants, great things. When GM's going to build a new product program, they start planning in advance. It's part of uh, how you do business, right? What ended up happening was GM has an overabundance of plants. They don't want to build a new plant, don't need to build a new plant. So you begin this whipsawing process. You go around to the states where your plants are located or where you might want to build a new plant and bring all these reasonable jobs in. And you look for tax bargains and tax breaks and tax uh, you know, bonds and whatever else you can get for state funding to do this project. So now you've got how many states involved in this conversation of the possibility they're going to be getting more employment or keeping employment. That's huge. Look at the history of the Lordstown plant. So now you've got states competing with each other for givebacks. How much money can they give back? Can they create a uh, free trade zone out of this that would enable other businesses? Well, these are big decisions. This is, you know, millions, tens, hundreds of millions of dollars being committed for a new product. So inside of that, you go to the local unions and look at the union rules and how much staffing you're going to have to have for production and maintenance. And maintenance is a huge deal, big money. And you begin talking to the unions. Here's what it would look like. Here's what it could look like. And you talk to engineering and you ask for cost by plant for automation and controls and conveyors. And mind you, these controls cover the whole plant making cars, paint shops, body shops, used to be cushion and trim shops. They made their own seats long ago just-in-time suppliers, huge supply chains, parts coming from across the globe now to a state somewhere. Does the state have the highways? Existing plants have these resources, but they have existing unions. So what do you do? <laughs> Another video. So this whip sign, you can see at each point in the conversation, you've got states competing against each other for these jobs, to keep jobs or to get new jobs. This is what Boeing has done. These right-to-work states have a competitive advantage over other states. In many ways, these right-to-work states have lower labor costs, period, period, end. And it forces unions to negotiate downward instead of upwards, which is part of whipsawing. They're competing against each other in a North American market, or maybe a global market. Maybe there's a plant down in Mexico or up in Canada that's part of the negotiations. So, yeah. It is a long convoluted story and the outcome is a Walmart taking over a town 
the outcome is the amount of money that those plants can move through an economy for good is huge. The amount stripped off the top is worrisome. So it's a bit chilly out here, starting to shake. Coffee's up. That was just an introduction to whip song. I mean, I'm sure you can find a course on it somewhere. Whip song is used in a bunch of other ways. Or if you know how to cut trees, if you've ever had a saw whip. Or you can play a saw. Peace out.